can walk, just don't stand and like respect the three metre line. So they're already violating the three metre line. Oh, and we are in the thick of the action here. Open division at Windmill 2023. Myself, Hannah Pendleby, delighted to be alongside Sam Murphy, who I believe, Sam, you specifically requested to do this game. Is there any reason for that? I mean, I'm a, an Irish homer. Uh, always want to watch these games regardless. Uh, I think it gives a little bit more flavour as well if I know the team. So wanted to get out here and see the game. We also played Amsterdam last year as Ranma. Absolutely. Well, it is a good start for the chaps in green. An offensive hold, nice and clean. What did you think of that first point? Yeah, it looked like uh, Amsterdam did well to shut down their first and second option, but Ireland reset pretty calmly. Um, they just came out of a nail biter against Gentle, I believe, came off from a minor as well. Um, so maybe you can come in and do the work well under pressure. It was a nice offensive hold as well to get the goal. Absolutely, and it was... Uh, First stats going to Owen, Owen Lawler, who round down a pretty tasty big deep shot. And finding Dean McCreary for his connection. So first look at the Amsterdam offense. It's a lot of short Dutchies alongside some international flavor and a couple of Irishmen as well. In fact, the man just throwing the disc there, Will Martin, who's been out of Ireland for quite some time. Good movement, Patrao. Ireland just really pinning AUC to just a very sli small slither of the pitch. Not able to much penetration deep, but that is a big old chuck. Patrao underneath it, but that might sail out of bounds. It does indeed. Bit of a frustrated option. Well, talking to AUC ahead of their last game, they definitely had one that their deep game was good. They lost 15-6. That's a big put to the man himself, the captain, snatching in the end zone. Luke Doyle for the goal. Absolutely, and it is always nice to see many of the Irish club lads coming together for their national sign. I think the uh, disc there thrown by Niall McCarthy uh, was currently of Pelt or formerly of Pelt, because I think one of the Pelt lads has moved across to Rana this year. Yeah, currently of Pelt. Um, I think most of them are, are still sticking around. A few of them have moved away from Limerick, um, but that uh, club connection uh, still really strong down there. So a lot of them kind of travel down to look at the surrounding areas. Um, and yeah, Niall, as soon as he gets the Absolutely. Well, we saw lots of separation downfield for both sides in that point, but it was the Amsterdam ultimate lot that weren't able to collect because that disc was just far too much of a sitter and got pushed by the wind out of bounds. Of course, we have seen the wind emerge. This morning was extraordinarily still, almost curiously still, in this Wonderland-themed tournament. So again, Ireland putting loads of pressure on the underneath. It's a good scoop on the far sideline. 
Easy swinging across. Marishwa into the centre. Again, containment match coverage. Really pressuring those underneath cuts. Happy to let those big ones go, perhaps, in the downfield space. We do have a foul call on the throw, Francesco Cardinale. Again, a very Dutch sounding surname there for Sean. <laughs> no, the youngster from Italy. So there are some pickups on this Amsterdam team wanting to come over and uh, enjoy the sights, sounds, and feels of Windmill Tournament. What's been your highlight so far, Smurf? Oh, absolutely. I believe stats leader, joint stats leader even for the tournament uh, back in EBUCC last weekend. So lovely to see her doing her thing out here on grass as well as sand. But a turnover, of course, generated and Irish hands on the disc. McAllister around. Say that, reading the shirt. Check myself. McGovern throws low. Oh, 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 Joshua Reed with the pickup. Yeah, Josh Reed, another guy who played with XVI the last couple of years and has come over to Ranla. Christy Tinkler looks deep to Hanson now, McCarty. Nice knee there from the Amsterdam player. Yeah, well, that is one for one in terms of those floaty passes then on shooting left as we see it on our pitch. Yeah, it seemed like Ireland were doing well, kind of moving the disc side to side. Um, maybe a little bit trigger happy there, uh, taking that shot. Christy putting it up to Hansom, great receiver, uh, but the Amsterdam man goes up strong, uh, manages to get the D, and the Amsterdam O line will have another shot going down, down winter. So, why is he called Handsome Nile? Well, the other Nile uh, is the not so nice side of the coin, uh, Ugly <laughs> Nile. <laughs> uh, but I think it's uh, purely uh, they started college at the same time. They're both Nile. They were in University of Limerick. And if there's two of them, you've got to differentiate somehow. So um, Handsome certainly coming out better 10 years later, maintaining the nickname. Oh, another hanging disc. And it's a lovely defensive play underneath, just tipping it away. Is Dennis Galvin. Yeah, great, great uh, defensive work there to make up the ground. He made the, the play cleanly as well. It seemed like there might be a little bit of contact, but he maintains his body position, goes up with the left hand and manages to get the D. Well, if you can do it, do it clean, but that's an immediate turnover, trying to connect with Alex Henry, but just bops out of his hands. So a great defensive block, but wasted opportunity. Trying to squeeze now, everyone finding their matchups and turning the screws. That one's an easy, casual grab. The one around is looked off, and that's a really nice way to go out. Francesco Cardinale finally puts a point on the board for AUC. Yeah, interesting uh, technique on that throw there. It seemed like almost a high release flick with a little bit of air bounce just to make it hang up a little bit longer. Um, but lovely shot, uh, hits the receiver perfectly in stride, and the defender really had no chance coming around from that break side. Yeah, absolutely he looks off the reset. <laughs> Clement was very free in the near side space. Another look at that tasty D from Galvin. Yeah, you can see the, the receiver on the goal there really uh, sells his cut to the break side, cuts hard, plants then to go deep. Uh, but because he made such a convincing cut to the break side, the defender had to respect it. Is a little bit too far under and can't make up the ground in such a short space. So we are absolutely delighted to have you alongside us in the live chat. And we have turned on Sam Murphy's microphone. 
It's a, it's a classic, a classic mistake. Happens to all of us, myself included. Certainly last weekend we had those a couple of times. So Ireland on offense, still early doors, but leading that one break of school. Starting this one, winning the toss. Dylan Ryan. Swinging across. McCreary now. Of course, taking, stepping up to the hockey and being one of the big names on Ranala this season. Having a reconfiguration year after that gold medal win last season. We might talk a little bit about that in some of the breaks of this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dean uh, really quarterbacking this offense so far. You could see caught the disc there and didn't really like what he saw downfield. So told everyone just to take a second, calm down. And they look a lot more structured now. Lovely inside shot from Flitter. Yeah, good flow and connection, but now inches away from the goal. Oh, and a little tiny scoop and some footwork from Joey Curtis, and that'll be good. Yeah, nice offense from the Irish there. Um, it is interesting to see how they're integrating players from every different club. Uh, I think there were a few XBI guys out there, some Pelt guys and some Ranla, um, but the chemistry looks great. I know they're taking a slightly different approach to the mixed team in that they are hosting training days, uh, so they don't train for weekends. They do uh, one day of the weekend, and then they have a little bit more time off. Um, as we all know, the season can get pretty uh, intense, but yeah, not showing any signs of lack of chemistry so far. Nice little easy goal for Joey Curtis at the, the front of the end zone. Yeah, I think that might have been a uh, push pass from Connor Selkirk in very, the end. Very cheeky. <laughs> Wouldn't be like him at all. <laughs> <laughs> he said heavily sarcastically. <laughs> So, yeah, it was interesting seeing earlier stages, actually, the uh, the XVI lads coming out to Leuven. The second sons of Dublin, as Lorcan Murray lovingly dubs them. Yeah, absolutely. They, they definitely seem to be pushing on every year. Uh, they got a couple of wins against Randall last year in the kind of domestic season. Um, I think getting the full squad to European tournaments will be the key for them, but there's a lot of spots up in the Open Division this year for ECF from the West, so wouldn't be surprised if XCI nabbed one of them and, and went to Euros and really looked to compete this time. I know they've been before, but I think they're a much stronger roster this year, especially with the addition of Jack McNamara coming back from Ranala. Um, he can really change a squad and uh, really make your roster competitive. Absolutely, the sort of people that we call impact players for sure. Cardinale with the big launch all the way across the pitch. That's a beautiful shot. Yeah, sublime offense there. Uh, showing you can do it on both sides of the disc. I think he caught the last one and he dishes out that one. Uh, it's a tough shot downwind, throwing that flick and making sure it has enough touch on it. Um, but he hit his receiver in stride again. The Irish defense just a few steps behind and can't make up the ground. Uh, an absolutely sublime throw. So you see that slow motion replay, beautiful execution. And I tell you what, I was the one that checked the rosters before this, and I'm missing one. Of course. <laughs> An entire human being. Commentator's curse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have had some uh, some interesting times with the stats coming through. Obviously, the rosters. Uh, just an announcement, PSA to everybody, or I said less public safety and more just public helpfulness. Please put in your roster information with all of the numbers that you'll be wearing at the tournament as soon as you can. Because yeah. when you lock that information, when we pull it from the uh, from the tournament website, <laughs> sometimes we've had entire teams with zeros <laughs> across the board. And I'm pretty sure you all aren't wearing zeros out here on the pitch. Yeah, I've a newfound appreciation for the difficulty of the commentating now, having come from the other side of the disc. So, uh, yeah, make it as easy as you can, folks. Curtis launches a rocket into the end zone. There is going to be coverage underneath it, and it pushes, just shepherds the opportunity away. Irish lads on the sideline doing a nice job of blocking our view there. Uh, just <laughs> so we couldn't see that turnover. Uh, always appreciate it. Oh, it looks like Lawler getting a bit trigger happy. But yeah, finneying. <laughs> we do have tape to keep the athletes behind the player line. Sure, sometimes people get a bit excitable and they go up to the right of the, the playing line. But Will Martin. Well, the Ireland lads on AUC saying ahead of this game they had mixed loyalties. So let's see if it's uh, Will Martin playing at his best. When he does, he's pretty difficult to stop. Oh, that's a squeeze on the far side. Yeah, lots of pressure right from the start of this point uh, from the Irish O-line. They won't want to get broken this early in the game. Oh, foot block 
foul called. You can see it all over the body language of Dean McCreary. Yeah, it looked like it almost might have been a foul called earlier in the throwing motion. It looked like the foot block itself was pretty clean, but maybe just hacking a little bit on the mark uh, so he didn't have a chance to get his hand out for the throw. Slinky inside shot. Finding Smirnoff. Seata. Henry Mattinson now, formerly of Cambridge. Well, that's going to escape the grasp of Will Martin. You can see the commiserations there, but thankfully remember to play defence. Oh, but there's exploded coverage on the near side. Sean Fitzgerald collects the offensive hold, but it took a little bit of an ask. Yeah, I thought my eyes were deceiving me there. Number zero is Andrew Russell, I believe, from the University of Texas, uh, where I went over and played a little bit back in 2018. Uh, I also met up with him last year after Windmill. I can tell you that man loves uh, a pitcher of Moscow Mule uh, or 10. <laughs> um, so if anyone's looking for some karaoke, he now lives on a houseboat in Amsterdam. Oh, fantastic. Um, so interesting character is Rusty. So you said that um, your Ranala iteration from last season played against AUC and they, uh, sorry, AUC, and they sort of took your lads down. So what happened in that game? And is it a very similar outfit this time? It looks like it. I, th I think teams use uh, windmill in different ways. Um, obviously, a lot of national teams here this year looking to peak in about a month or so. Whereas if you're a team like AUC or Ranla last year, maybe have eyes on the longer view, uh, want to rotate a little bit more and get your depth involved. Um, last year, AUC were just really clinical. Um, similarly to them now, we, we were taking a lot of deep shots and they came down with them. Um, so fair play to them for, for shutting that down. We wanted to test it out and Maybe it wasn't the best team to do it against, but uh, it, it does look like a similar outfit uh, and they've shown spark so far. Hopefully they can start to string a few more together. Absolutely. Well, just the one break conceded thus far in this game. Uh, you see not having the best start after that 15-6 loss. Well, their deep game looked good when it worked, but when it didn't, it was a bit curious. Faking that high release. And it looks to be some kind of, no, is it person? No, it's person still. But squeezing on the near sideline generates the turn. There's a lot of lines out here on the pitch. It can get a bit confusing. McCarthy surveying his options. High stall count, just a little bit of an exploitation of the face mark behind the back. McCarthy goes up line. Hammer over the top. Oh, yes, please. We love that. <laughs> he bobbles it. Good <laughs> re-catches. <laughs> Playing with fire there, Josh Reed. Uh, really interesting to see the kind of pelt backfield there. Uh, Tinkler picking it up, working it with now McCarthy. So there are pockets of well-developed chemistry. You saw it was a high stall when Niall had the disc. He turned around and threw without even thinking. Uh, he knows where Christie's going to be. But then on the other side of that, Christie's looking downfield to a receiver. He maybe doesn't know so well, looks off the initial flick and sends that hammer over to Josh Reed, who keeps it interesting for the stream, bobbles, and, and then collects the goal. Well, that is what separates the wheat from the chaff, keeping that focus and attention on the disc, regardless of how well you think you secured it on the initial attempt. But we love a little bit. And you really cannot deny that throw the wind is here it's fluttering the flags behind our stream but this is a thrower's wind so those over the head shots are definitely on in these conditions 100 percent. you'd expect teams at this level uh, to be able to hit those shots pretty consistently we can see the flags are fluttering uh, but it does feel a little bit like the winds died down from maybe at the start of this game um, so less upwind downwind now and if you're going to be that far off uh, teams like ireland are definitely going to punish you So making it to the third of the pitch with ease. And this is now where the pressure is going to be put on. It does look like either loose match or there's definitely a zone jailbroken through. Spolstra working it to Petral. Petral sort of trying to direct traffic in front of him. Doesn't like much of what he sees. Exploits the face mark. Oh, and there's a quite a low hammer. Just about escapes the fingers though. Slippery disc. Yeah, seemed like he was right on the sideline. It's a little bit difficult to tell, but uh, he was having a quick check of his feet before he went up and with something coming in that hot, um, just a, a tough, tough play to make there for Rusty. 
Yeah, we said we like those hammers over the top, but that one was extremely flat and extremely fast. Yeah, nice work from Amsterdam initially, though, against the zone. Uh, found a pocket of space and managed to kind of jailbreak a little bit, as you said. Uh, but once Ireland recovered and, and put some pressure on the handlers, they managed to force that turn. Well, this 4-3 on the bounce. Two breaks already gained from the Irish lads. Keenan eventually escapes through. I think that's Luke Doyle hitting Niall McCartney, but potentially a turnover. Difficult to see. Yeah, difficult to see among, among the pack of <laughs> athletes. And our level monitor didn't help us too much either, but a turnover and a gift for AUC. And that is the... Let's have a look. Fourth turnover we've seen this game so far for the Irish Open team. Yeah, it looks like a, a pretty tight, aggressive zone from the Irish here. We can see that when the disc is on the sideline, they're pretty tight on the handlers. It is leaving a little bit more space over the top, but if you're playing an aggressive zone, you're kind of daring teams to do that. Um, so in a sense, that's still a win. Even if they score, they just want to change the look up for the Amsterdam offense. Absolutely, and their two breaks the better, so they can really afford to. The lefty flick, <laughs> zesting in the inside. First one doesn't work, but the travel is called. Why McCarthy says he doesn't like the footwork there. Oh. Yeah, interesting call. Uh, I suppose I would go back to the does it affect play element of that. It seemed like it was a pretty open receiver uh, without a mark on the thrower. So, you know, by the letter of the law, it's a travel. Does it affect the game? Hard to say. Well, they're going to have to make it so nice they do it twice. Pass going back. Oh, that's a laser. <laughs> just about keeping hold of it. Arnus that just closing the bread basket up. Yeah, clutching it to his chest like a newborn child. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> few like bubbles in that end zone so far. <laughs> well, they did it twice. It wasn't as pretty on the second asking, but it's just enough. Ricardo Patrao powering that one in. Yeah, okay. Maybe I'm a little bit petty, uh, but if I'm Amsterdam, I'm, uh, I'm taking a little bit of extra sauce with that uh, upwind hold. They did do it twice, and I always like when a team does call something that's a little bit in the gray area, if you can put it in again, it just feels a little bit better. Yeah, sort of like a, dare we say, a little bit of vengeance. Yeah, an and one <laughs> for all the basketball fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> and one. Who's your team that you support? In basketball, I'm a Celtics fan, yeah, okay. to my detriment. Although they've been good, but it almost hurts more when they get so far and so then uh, and then fall at the last fall hurdle. Fall at the last hurdle, yeah. Is that so Boston. Boston, yeah. Yes. I think they lost in the essentially the semi-finals to the Heat this year. So we we'll yeah. go again. Not 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 up on my my uh, current knowledge, but would you believe uh, basketball is actually a game I've commentated before? No way. Way. Unreal. <laughs> You can tell the, the expertise then. Uh, <laughs> I'm certainly very new to this, but uh, oh, much easier when you have an experienced uh, partner here. Your analysis is on point, though, Smurf. <laughs> Clearly, your Frisbee IQ is <laughs> extremely high. And giving the fans what they want, certainly lots of fans of you in the chat. But at the moment, looking a little bit lost for options, it's Killian Flynn with those lovely sunnies. But good movement now, Lola. Oh, that's going to be a sky ball for sure. The cluster underneath it. Who's going to rise up? Oh, it's Irish hands and it's Dylan Ryan with the clutch goal. Yeah, beautiful takedown in a, a bit of a bunch. That offense was clean. Uh, they isolated cutters in big space and ultimately you get Connor Selkirk on the disc uh, with only one cutter downfield in Killian Flynn. Uh, Selly's one of the strongest throwers on this team, so that's a dream scenario. The wind is picking up a little bit again. Uh, maybe needs to get that a little bit lower and then in front of Flinner so he can use his speed. But again, you have athletes like Dylan Ryan on the pitch. Uh, they're going to bail you out if it does go a little bit wrong. So we do have indeed a lot of li live chat love. Uh, apparently Shane Doyle's a big fan of your answer. I presume to the uh, who's your favourite basketball team. Yeah, question. absolutely. And, uh, I, I can say for sure, I don't know much, but I know I'm definitely not a secret Arsenal fan. Uh, <laughs> Leeds United till I die. <laughs> Leeds United? Yeah. Oh, Spent a little bit of time living choice. in Leeds. Yeah. Decent choice. Decent. So uh, we've also had a shout saying that AUC needs to play number 20, Odds Odds Demir, more. 
they can't win without him. We'll see if they get him out there. I, I'm going to be watching him now. Absolutely. We'll Someone's get applied the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get your technical analysis in full from Mr. Samir. <laughs> who's joined the Injured Pundits Club. No better place to be. Absolutely. Well, maybe out there on the pitch, <laughs> but uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to do some re rest and recovery. Yeah, Ireland makes two from two so far, so not missing me too much out there. Uh, and <laughs> oh, there's sure another pelt man on the disc. A pelt man on the disc? Yeah, oh. Louis O'Reilly, uh, living in Amsterdam now. I believe a software engineer moved over here, um, but is a pelt man at heart and fires a lovely lefty flick up. Oh, Did he get a touch on that? It seemed like a, a close one for that layout bid from Kieran Moroni coming back from a knee injury. Um, so great to even see him out there. Um, but yeah, Amsterdam sticking in upwind. Uh, a really nice shot from Louis on the sideline. Gets that lefty flick. Um, potentially the harder throw uh, going upwind. I, I would say the righty backhand going up into that direction would be easier, but showing that he's got the arms for it. Uh, and Amsterdam seem to have settled into this game a little bit more. They certainly have steadied the ship. They're still trailing those two breaks and they are somewhat running out of time in this first half. Of course, Ireland did start the game on offence. They won the toss. Full 15 points cap here in Amsterdam and 75 minutes of game time in 80 minute time slots. We're actually counting down on our clock. So, you know, your eyes do not deceive you. Normally, Ulti TV, we count upwards, but uh, we've chosen to do it a little bit different. What about you, Smurf? Are you a fan of the count-up clock, a la sort of soccer, or are you a fan of the countdown clock? Countdown, definitely. Uh, I never know how long the games are. Um, I, I have no idea what the round times are, so it makes it a little bit easier if I'm just waiting for it to, to hit zero rather than trying to figure out whether it's 75, 90, 100. It changes too frequently for me to keep track. <laughs> well, that is the bizarre thing. That's the, is that... The tournament formats just seem to chop and change so often. What's the points cap? What's the time limit? And it does create some quirky moments where, realistically, as long as both the ca like the teams agree, the captains agree on wh whatever the outcome of a game is, you know, if maybe you've played a little bit too long or a little bit too short, as long as people are agreeing, self-refereed sport, folks. Yeah. So you can't blame your scorekeepers if they accidentally try and end your game too early. Absolutely. But uh, out of bounds, Paul, I believe our first of the game, giving ideal field position for Selkirk. So, Selly with the beginning of a potential pole play. Yeah, you see Amsterdam immediately going to kind of a play buster. Uh, it might be an arrowhead zone, uh, but they had the, the two reset handler defenders sitting in the lane just trying to stop that pole play, as you said, uh, that Ireland were probably looking to, to go for. So there's a possible question of that being a tactical out of bounds pull, since there is that zone look coming out of the blocks. I kind of like a passive zone against Ireland. They clearly are very athletic, very dynamic in the style that they played. Scuba over the top, you cheeky boy, finding Fitzgerald. But we've got a gel breakthrough, so we're melting to match defense. Lawler on the far side, casual to McCreary. Inside shot that, I've thrown a little bit of zest on top. Looking around now, the call lift. Reaching around the back pocket with Kariri again. Oh, and he marshals it into the blades of grass at the back of the end zone. Yeah, a little bit too much sauce on that inside flick uh, from McCreary. They did work it up well until that point. I think that is, from what I've seen, the most common turnover in those red zone sets is just trying to force that IO flick into a small space. Um, Ireland have great athletes out there. I don't think they need to, to try and force it into a small space and a hand block on the mark, recollected uh, by the Italian man applying his trade out here in Amsterdam. Immediately launches it, perhaps just playing the game for yards. Yep, you see the deceleration there. Max Angeli racing towards the end zone, but he knows not even he is fast enough to get there. So just sticking with the match defense after starting this one with that zone. The call left high. Opportunity there for the defense, but just went too much for the run through rather than the sky ball. Oh, I love that toss out in front from Flint. High and across. 
This is really nice flow and movement, but getting a little bit caught in each other's ways. Very close setup for the handlers. Perhaps maybe see them spread it a little bit more. Can they find that extra swing? They do. But there's going to be a call that will bring us back. Looks to be a foul. Yeah, fingertips on the bid there from Cardinale uh, on Owen Lawler at the front of the end zone. I'm not sure if it would have uh, impacted the play. It seems like the disc is staying there. So uh, some nice red zone offense. It does look a little bit cluttered. Uh, you'd like to see them give each other a little bit more time to get free in that front of stack position. Uh, but moving it back to Selly here and Arden will get another go. More reps before you see. I'm sure they'll love that. Indeed, and we are two weeks away from EUC. Well, no, less, more than that, because it's two tournaments away. We have two events between now and then. Yeah, I hope we have more than two weeks. I'm trying to get back, so <laughs> I need a little bit more time. <laughs> <laughs> Big hammer over the top. That's going to be blocked and taken out of contention by AUC. But if it's chuck it in hope, I think. Yeah, and, and that's a strange one uh, from this outline who has looked relatively calm so far. Uh, Sean Fitzgerald, uh, tall and, and lanky target, um, but never looked like he was too confident going up for that disc. So AUC with the full stretch to go, racing down the pitch. Clement, lefty backhand. Oh, that's a big bump on the mark. Don't think it was intentional. I think he just couldn't stop his momentum, but a bit too much touching for my flavour. Pick downfield, though. Things looking a little bit clustered. Yeah, Amsterdam being stingy with the disc here. Uh, they had a couple of power position kind of resets there with people going deep. Uh, but looking them off, uh, Ireland definitely jumping on those deep cuts. Uh, and they've managed to work it down with the under so far. So we'll see if they can slot this in for what is a, a much needed break getting closer and closer to half time. So Curtis Clement sending the disc back into the hands of Will Martin. <laughs> in our live chat, we've had why is, why is Will Martin playing for the wrong team? Of course, <laughs> a fa former Ireland, Ireland Open player on sand and on grass. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and a former Clapham player as well. So a wealth of experience for Will. Um, oh, we, we won't talk about Clapham. Come yeah, on. No. This is all about Irish. Not on an right Irish now. stream. <laughs> We're allowed to talk about them uh, just until uh, maybe a couple of months' time. Because currently, I suppose we're on top, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see how long that lasts. Uh, of course, and if you've not watched the Open Final from last year UCF, we recommend you do as Ireland Root won it into the end zone and ended quite a long point. Yeah, you've got to suspect that Will Martin did not watch that at UCF Final because uh, Dean McCreary picking up the disc on the on the halfway line with a defender streak or with an offensive player streaking, he's going to throw that flick hook every single time. So do your homework, Will. <laughs> and of course, all of these Ulti TV live streams free to watch live and on demand at your leisure. And if you want to help support us, what do you have to do, Sam? Become a patron. Uh, I suppose like and subscribe is the, the bare minimum. I'm expecting every single one of those Irish people trolling me in the chat to like and subscribe at the very least. Uh, but become a patron and you can get your favorite teams on stream, I believe, with the voting. Indeed, you have the power. We had a record number of votes for the first round. Of course, it's difficult to pick games here at Windmill because it's the curious, the almighty algorithm. I think we had 800 and some for... Uh, the choices for our opening games. But yes, if you also haven't, if you haven't subscribed, I think we hit 1,700 subscribers wow. not too long ago. So, you know, first 1,700, then the world. 17,000, I'm hearing. Sorry, 17,000. That's what I meant. Underselling ourselves for sure. You can see that some of the crew enjoying the sunshine here i'm very pleased murph that we're under a nice tent keeping us in the shade absolutely uh, my pasty irish skin cannot be out there for longer than 20 minutes at a time so my one requirement was uh, a chair and, and the shade is certainly much appreciated as well although i have to say you're looking extraordinarily stylish you've got like a velour <laughs> button up going on which matches your fetching sling so you said you're trying to get back for euc is that is that correct or is it you just just dangling the carrot in front of us before snatching it cruelly away. I mean, I'm 100% trying to get back. There's very little that the doctors can tell me at the moment until the bone heals. Um, but I've been out to Fiona Myrna, who does all the 
Ranla and uh, my physio as well uh, over a top physio. Um, and I was out there on Tuesday. She's going to do everything she can do to get me back. Uh, and as soon as I can start doing work, I'll start doing it. Oh, well, you heard it here first. Sam Murphy, ready to work out here. And actually, also, massive shout out to Fiona Merna and everything that she does. There was an amazing way of she said if you needed to calm down, which I think probably it's fair to say some of our TV crew needed this morning when things were going ever so poorly because of technical issues. If you just breathe out for 10 seconds, that's it. That's all it's really simple. So maybe AUC right now need to breathe out for 10 seconds. So just put this disc in because they need a hold here in this half point, uh, if you will. It's not a match point, half point. So of course, 7-4, the current score to Ireland. Mattinson. Faking, faking, throwing that around. Finally opens up as the cut clears. Slinky inside air bounce to Sata. That one's a little bit low and flat and it's gonna be a bridge too far for Henry Mattinson to cross. Yeah, I think the receiver pretty deep when he looked uh, to make that throw. So you really have to kind of muscle it into that wind. Probably just didn't put enough height on it, um, but it's tough. It, it's a fine line to draw because if you put any more kind of air under it, there's two Irish defenders there as well. So a uh, difficult shot and not, not perfectly executed that time. And that is what we have seen happen on that fast left side of the pitch as our cameras have it, has been discs sitting up in the wind, hanging out, and causing some mischief. That one a little bit low, but fine enough for McCarthy. Big old launch. Oh, is that a repeat from an earlier game? No, 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 no. We saw that earlier, those two connecting beautifully. But that one a little bit too much with the extra touch of wind trying to hit Doyle. Yeah, that's a, a tough backhand throw across. It's always going to carry a little bit. It does seem like going upwind, teams are favoring the hook. Uh, they're working up well to kind of half field. I know it's hot out here. My personal opinion would be if you've done the work to get it to half field, just keep grinding the unders and cash it in for the goal going upwind. Uh, I understand that it's frustrating and, and tough out there when you are tired, but uh, I'd love to see the teams just kind of continue to grind the unders and instead of giving defences a, a bailout of just throwing the, the hook into that. It's what is a pretty tough win there. Yeah, the wind conditions causing that perhaps a little bit of favour for Ireland who very successfully gained themselves that three-point advantage by virtue of the two breaks in this half. Still tight enough, but it's looking like it might be as much out of reach as that disc was trying to hit Ricardo Patrao. Yeah, Luke Doyle kind of blaring in on the under there. Uh, didn't get a touch on the, the defense, um, but managed to uh, put enough pressure on. Sam Micklem now with the disc outside the end zone for the Irish team and new, new captain of the Ranla team. And that's textbook offense. Uh, they swing it off the sideline, hit Aidan Kelly. He comes across to Louis Stewart uh, and they dump a swing for the easy goal. So that is half double score line action. 8-4 as we see someone swimming on the pitch. Is that McCreary? Who else? Who else could it be? <laughs> uh, we saw the breaststroke last week from uh, Rory Kyo um, in the EBUCC final for Margarita Mix. Uh, he got a, a few laps in, and there we see his counterpart, Dean McCreary. Uh, I don't even know what swimming stroke that would be considered. Maybe the butterfly uh, certainly looks uh, a lot less gracious on the grass. <laughs> Whatever it was, it caught our attention here in the booth. But as the players on the field take a half-time break, we will too. But don't go anywhere. We'll be back with the second half of this match and after these messages. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Always on the move? 
you can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. Okay, my team. We believe mixed is the best for the sport, for the world. That's why we're making a global showcase, starting in Europe, made in Amsterdam. OTV. OTV.net. Enjoying the show? Show your support for the live stream and the people making the show. Buy a super chat or super sticker on YouTube directly. Select your donation and type your message to the world. And share. All donations go into directly funding new shows. Buy a super sticker or super chat now. Thank you. We are back in the action here in Amsterdam windmill 2023 and we get a cheeky little head nod from Fitzgerald to Sam Murphy alongside myself Hannah Pendlebury so Sam we've had a big call out in the live chat from of course you know we have a bit of subscriber only chat sometimes in French can we ask Smurf for predication it's the predictions v the, the Ireland Germany game next round in the mixed division Thoughts, feelings, concerns? Mike? Yeah, I mean, Germany looking strong so far. Uh, just looking back over their results, they had a 15-3 win against the Colombian team Fusion and a 15-6 win against the Polish. Um, so definitely looking strong. I know Ireland have had two wins as well, but slightly tighter margins. Um, I would say oh, it's going to be a close one. I'd say the Germans will do it by three or four. Um, and uh, I'll continue with my theme of applying the pressure to the other national teams and not to my own. <laughs> All right then. Well, there you go, folks. You heard it here first. Well, perhaps some revenge later on in the tournament. You never know. So, zone again. This time it's Irish zone. So rather than that arrowhead that we saw coming out of AUC, this seems to be just trying to trap AUC around the hand of marks and make them throw over the top again, which I like as a strategy. Yeah, it looks like quite an aggressive zone. Uh, there is an Amsterdam player uh, that is about 30 meters deep of any Irish player. Um, so, oh, sky ball. Yeah, <laughs> what they refer to as a hospital pass, but cleaning up the trash again. Cardinale connecting in that deep space with Andrik Dumas. Or he referred to himself as dumbass, that player that you quite rightly pointed out, Sam, was miles deep of the pack. He's making himself available after that. Cleaning up the trash. Yeah, it, it is tough to get a read on those. Uh, obviously, air bounced the backhand and, and went over everyone's head. Um, but that's a smart play. Uh, often when it goes up to such a big pack, uh, it is just going to go over everyone's head because there's so much jostling going on. Uh, so reads the play well, makes a layer catch, and then has the composure to stand up and throw a pinpoint hook. Uh, easy goal for the Amsterdam team in the end. Well, I can't quite catch on that replay who it was that climbed the ladder over the top of the pack in the initial instance. But if it weren't for the fact that Cardinale was in that area, just making himself a threat around, that would have been a clean D certainly the way to do it going up nice and high and aggressive yeah i think it might have been niall mccarthy uh, just purely based on his facial expression when cardinale made the catch uh, he looked a little bit frustrated that he hadn't got the d um, but you know amsterdam have to take their opportunities here against what is a strong irish national team and showing they have the ability to do that so far Get up! so a hold out of half for a uc 5-8 they trail as the lads try and move the disc forward perhaps a slightly more flat footed defence in their second half they are sort of just giving up the disc and not quite applying that same shoulder pressure they were earlier on Martin sagging off coming back in now 
That one's going to be snatched on the far sideline, but a pit call reeling us back. Looks like Disc will stay with Lawler. Yeah, good patience there from Joey Curtis. Uh, we talked earlier about teams doing the hard work and then taking the shots on that maybe were a little bit risky. You could see Lawler was streaking deep, uh, but Joey pumps him and Lawler comes back under for, for what is a big gain and, and now Ireland in perfect position to, to finish off this clean hold. Yeah, the Irish have certainly proven themselves big threats shooting into those deep spaces is what you have to consistently keep doing no matter what the conditions but they're having to throw that back reset to McCreary running out of options that field but squeaking it up the line Lawler putting out a beautiful lustrous flick it's going to arc a little bit and sink into the paws of Joey Curtis yeah beautiful shot there uh, and that is when you want to take that kind of slightly deep shot on uh, you have power position uh, and an isolated cutter downfield that you can just kind of sail it out to. Owen Lawler showing that he can both score goals uh, and put them in the end zone as well. That was a beautiful flick uh, into a pretty biting wind. So it's going to require way more than just trading if AUC are going to see themselves get back into this game. But of course, playing a tight-ish scoreline against a very quality side thus far, AUC... Had that 15-6 loss in the first round. Was the Irish fared better? Yeah, I think both of these teams have played top of Nord, uh, the Italian team, and, and came out stronger, uh, or came out the winners in those games. Um, but the Irish team looking to stay undefeated here. Uh, they'll be happy with this first day so far after what was a difficult Tom's tourney for them. Um, so looks like they're really hitting their stride at the right time of the season. You say a difficult Tom's tourney. What were the challenges for the Irish Open? I think it was just uh, finding that level of chemistry as such a new team. Um, I think they had a pretty good start. They pushed GB and they won a couple of games uh, early on, uh, but they'll be disappointed. I think they finished kind of 16th or 17th in the end, which for a team of players of this caliber, uh, they would expect more. And we have a foul call downfield on Sam Micklem. Perhaps a difference in the approach to physicality downfield. Uh, Sam, quite a physical defender. Uh, absolutely fair at all times, uh, but you do have to kind of find your body contact and it looks like the offensive player just thought that was a little bit too far. Yeah, and the rules, of course, are that you play to the person who prefers even less contact. That is the way it is drawn up. If, you know, if you're happy to tassel and push around a little bit, of course, ultimate is a non-contact sport. So it's not limited contact like the likes of basketball at all. So a proper non-contact sport, but occasionally games can get a little bit grindy. I just only only enjoy that position as long as it doesn't get corly at the end of the game. But that's a huge attempt to the bid for Micklem. Trying to sneak one away. Ireland just sagging off this near side reset, trying to perhaps pinch at their opponents. from the sideline is don't bite so just trying to stick true Cardinale looking threatening casual shrieking of Arson. puts it up oh and what an out read and box denial that is Darman with the grab but a call upfield doesn't look like it's going to impact that play though so the goal will stand yeah and that's where while it is a non-contact sport, uh, you can use a little bit of kind of body contact just to keep the defender out. Uh, he's not initiating there as the offensive player, just kind of holding his ground, uh, what we would say kind of boxing out Aiden Kelly. Um, and Aiden knows that in order to make that defensive play, he's probably going to have to go through the offensive player. Uh, obviously, he's not going to do that. And uh, the offensive player manages just to, to get a little bit of space and, and reel it in for the goal. So continuing to trade out in this second half. No breaks been scored yet, but of course, the lads from the Emerald, Emerald Isle granted themselves three breaks in the first stages. Yeah, Here in the 
AUC huddle, Sam, what do you say right now? I think AUC are looking good on offense. They do need to generate a little bit more pressure. We haven't seen this Irish O-line necessarily be the most uh, kind of stringent with the disc. Uh, they have shown that they want to take a few shots on that maybe aren't highest percentage. So if I'm AUC, I'm taking a few risks here. I'm pushing the Irish players out uh, rather than giving them the unders and seeing if they can complete them. And if they do, uh, kind of hats off to the Irish team there. Well, yeah, it's trying to change that rhythm as well when you, you know, start taking away something different. Trying to unsettle, keep your opponents guessing and constantly having to reconfigure. The pressure being applied, just having to chuck it around the back of the mark into the blind space. Two green shirts there, but neither of them connected with. Not enough loft for a chuck it and hope. Yeah, a good, uh, good bit of reset defense there from... Uh, the ex belt man, Louis O'Reilly, uh, I think he shut down the first and second option, which forced Lawler to go around. That around backhand with the wind against you is, is a tough one to get that loft on. But looks like an immediate turnover, a squandered opportunity for AUC after generating all that squeezing pressure in the near space. That one slicing through, a bit of a cluster all coming other together at the same time. Ireland sort of not holding their spacing. That one, though, looks like it could be beautiful, but it's going to be tippled out of bounds. Great early play from Arnas Bolstra. Yeah, Dylan Ryan looking to the end zone there. Uh, maybe a little bit too much IO. Uh, let's the wind carry that disc out of bounds. Um, yeah, again, I, I'm, I'm thinking Ireland just need to keep these in bounds, let their athletes go up and get it. Um, it seems to have been more either overthrows uh, or just sending it straight OB rather than AUC making huge plays in the deep space. So second asking for the AUC dealer to try and grind one of these breaks and it's a lovely expansive shot across but an immediate throw away. Well execution like that ain't going to get you anywhere near a break. No, beautiful, uh, beautiful shot from the handler to get it off the line there. Uh, you got to be frustrated if you, you hit an open receiver, but effort there from number three to try and get the disc back. Well, that's a lovely play. And another turnover in this game. Can they make it happen on the third try for a defensive break? They really need one to get back into this game it starts here there was a potential max underneath it and the huge layout attempt that just comes up short that was lovely stuff from max angeli yeah he's been creating separation in the deep space uh, he hasn't been found by his team yet um but yeah positive signs for the amsterdam offense there um they did have two receivers that had deep space uh, but the flick just a little bit too much sauce on it and a timeout called as this one becomes quite the grindy point. Three turnovers apiece. So we're going to take a brief break here in the booth as well. But don't go anywhere. We'll be back with the second half of this game continuing after these messages. Enjoying the show? Show your support for the live stream and the people making the show. Buy a super chat or super sticker on YouTube directly. Select your donation and type your message to the world. And share. All donations go into directly funding new shows. Buy a super sticker or super chat now. Thank you.
back in the action here. It's the Open Division Windmill 2023 and it's Ireland Open looking pretty hot against AUC, the outfit that denied some of the Irishmen on this pitch last year when they were together as that less, le lesser known team, Ranala. You know, just, just only went and won themselves a European Championship Finals gold medal. Yeah, how, was, how was it for you, Sam? It was great. Uh, it was an interesting season because we probably didn't have the best season on paper. I think we probably came 18th or 19th at, uh, at Wimmer last year. As I see Ranla legend Alan Fitzpatrick uh, across the, the field there, sauntering onto the fields of Windmill, uh, coming for a look at current Amsterdam native. Uh, but yeah, it was a great season. Um, played the long game and, and Frenchie and the coaches must have judged it per to perfection. Absolutely. And if you're not subscribed to, I think it's better everyday co everyday better coaching or better, better everyday coaching. That's yeah. the badger. All that knowledge from Ian French for your reading pleasure. Yeah, interesting. Just looking around at some of the other scores, Germany and France women tied at nine so far, uh, whereas Mooncatcher is three up on the Czech national team uh, in the men's division. So nine six to Mooncatcher so far. That's got to be a barnstormer. You mean the open division? Oh, open division. <laughs> Apologies. Still learning, still learning. <laughs> it is a curious one because we did see a language change sort of in the mid of the teen years. But it is back to being proper open, hence the name Ireland Open. McAuliffe. Nice one. Just spinning all the way around. Bit of decoration on that goal. I think that's McCreary, right? Yeah, looks like McCreary, and that was a, a lovely little soft inside flick. Um, we kind of talked about it earlier that that might be the most common turnover uh, when you really try and jam those inside flicks into small spaces, but McAuliffe uh, putting a lot of touch on that throw, it just makes it a lot easier to catch for that receiver coming across. <laughs> you say easier to catch. I mean, McCreary did have to dance all the way around the world, you know, a proper like ballerina twirl in to reel that goal in. So it wasn't the easiest. You if you're being picky, you could always make that one easier if your receiver has to dance around yeah. like that. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> they could make it a little easier on themselves. But certainly nice to see not a turnover trying to hit that inside channel. Looks like the pole went directly out of bounds. So Amsterdam being given uh, an early Christmas gift here and bringing it in about five meters from the upwind end zone. I uh, gotta oh. be frustrated if you're the Irish coaching staff there. Absolutely. Well, are they gonna look at gift horse? Now this is a good opportunity for Ireland to show how they can play red zone D with the very best of them, big tightness, but there's an expansive shot over the top left all alone. It's. Dumas, Andrik Dumas in his fetching bucket hat. Yeah, Cardinale didn't really have many options there, uh, bringing it in from the sideline. Ireland seemed to shut down things closer to the disc, uh, but a uh, nice calm experienced head from Cardinale. Knows there must be something open if there's that many Irish defenders around him. Uh, finds him in the, the back corner of the end zone. Dumas with another easy goal. Yes, there was a little bit of... Uh, <laughs> self-deprecation and a massive thank you to Andre Dumas one of the players helping us get our roster information locked in ahead of this game referred himself as a dumbass which is quite funny I'm, I imagine perhaps of someone accidentally mispronouncing his surname on a live stream in years past perhaps you never know But uh, yeah, a fair point from John Doc saying it's better to get those bad pulls out now rather than uh, have them saved up for <laughs> EUC later on. 
Absolutely. John Dock has been getting all the bad ones out of his system for years. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing the, the good ones at some point in the near future. And congrats, Dock, on the new baby. Indeed. I believe Aaron is the name they've gone for. Aaron Darty, yeah. And also, congratulations to uh, the person who, let's, let's face it, did the hard work. Absolutely. Rahil Doshnedova. Such a fantastic thing to know that both the Toshnelova sisters having added to the ultimate community by bringing those new lives in are going to be hopefully returning just showing once again like so many athletes do that mothers and uh, the, the status of mother and athlete are not at loggerheads they very much can be intertwined beautifully but of course we love our ultimate dads too 100% we played against Inej Bringel who I believe had a baby around eight months ago uh, and was playing for Ufa in the final last week and certainly has not lost even half a step she was tearing it up out there oh there was nearly space for a redemption round the back the disc escaping Dylan Ryan and ping-ponging certainly that was Lawler that had a look at it but at the moment, this is not the moment, this is not the point where you have to make those huge hero bids. Of course, thinking about the fact that you've got a real big show to attend in a couple of weeks' time. So an opportunity here for AUC to get at last, maybe a break. There's a lot of touching on that one from Ryan, an immediate foul call. So he doesn't like that kind of hustle through the back side. So Srinivasan will retain possession. Yeah, good bid from Dylan in terms of seeing the space uh, and making the dive. Maybe you go with the right hand there and try to orient your body to avoid the contact. Seemed like he did the hard work uh, and just gave the AC player the chance to make that call by just having a little bit too much body contact on his bid. Cardinale again. I have to say, gobby player of the match so far, Cardinale. 100%. He's looked like AC's kind of rock um, and on the disc. He's very confident, but Joni can go downfield as well, so uh, a tough one to guard. So this for the long-awaited break, but it is going to be an overshot trying to hit that far sideline, but that wind taking it away. Yeah, we see Dean McCreary approaching the disc here, looking upwind. Looking very casual. Unlike him. <laughs> He has been uh, sporting his Ranala Sun hoodie, trying to keep the uh, the beating UVA, UVB rays off the back of his neck. Because, of course, it's always sunny in Ireland, right? Always. Flint running it down, but he's going to be denied by a good poach off the back. To be fair, though, uh, all the tournaments I've ever played in Ireland, Sam, have indeed been extremely sunny, especially in March. Who'd think it? I, I won't say my own experience, just because I don't want to... Don't want to ruin the sunny, sunny Limerick marketing uh, push that's been going on for UC, but... Uh, oh, wait, yeah. no, I lie. No, I was actually playing at Worlds last year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was not sunny, sunny Limerick in the slightest. No, but uh, to be fair, though, even if it's rainy, rainy Limerick, the pitches were immaculate. And we finally have an immaculate break. The conception and reception is there, and that is going to be <laughs> much-needed energy into AUC. It might be a little bit too much too late, Sam, but that was really nice. Yeah, bookends uh, for number six. Number six not on our roster currently, so we can't give you the shout out that you deserve. Uh, but played smart defense in the upwind end zone. Uh, there were a couple of Irish uh, offensive players there, but he managed to sweep up the disc. Um, and we've seen a couple of times when AUC are shooting downwind that they're overcooking uh, those deep shots because the defender's a little bit too shallow. Whereas he was getting kind of pushed out there you think maybe typically he's a little bit too deep to continue going, um, but he's clearly learned from what has happened previously in the game, continues his deep shot uh, and manages to collect it without a defender in the vicinity. Well, there is a name on the back of the number six jersey. We uh, managed to get our eyes and wrap our tongues around it because some of these Dutch names can be a little bit challenging at points. But either way, at long, 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 long last... We get a break from AUC. So 10-8 now the score. For Ireland Open still sitting pretty with a little thin cushion after getting those three breaks in the first half. Yeah, I'm sure it's been talked about already on the streams uh, throughout the day, but even if you are 
a little bit out of touch in terms of winning the game uh, in the Swiss draw format. Every single point really does count. Uh, so Amsterdam will be delighted that they can have that point swing, uh, get to 10-8. Uh, and with a team on form like the Irish team is, uh, that could be, even if it is a two-point loss, uh, a good loss later. But let's see if they can continue to close the gap and maybe squeak out a win at the end here. Oh, a casual dish over the top from Lawler. And that brings us to eight for AUC, but 11 for Ireland Open. Score cap, of course, here is 15 in total. So we're not too far away from this one being closed out with six minutes left on the clock. I feel like we're probably going to hit time cap before we hit score cap. It just goes to show how much these two teams have been pushing each other. And certainly in the second half, we had that point, Sam, in the middle of this one where we had six turnovers, three apiece. So some things for Ireland to think about, certainly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and sometimes it can be a bit of a, I don't know, positive reinforcements, uh, even when there are mistakes. Um, I know that certainly at training with Ranla, we typically don't let points go on that long. We play one or two possession games each, just so you know that if you aren't holding on to the disc and stingy with the disc, uh, good teams aren't going to give you that many chances to score. So Ireland having those points where they have four or five turnovers per team, that's something they're going to need to watch uh, because when you come up against the likes of Germany, GB, it's Italy at EUC, uh, they're not going to squander two or three break chances if you give them. So the pull length and depth showing just how strong this wind has become in the later stages of this game. AUC shooting downwards. Srinivasan with that high stall reset. Going all the way around blindly throwing around the mark to, of course, Cardinal Late, who's still holding on to his title in our hearts of player of this match. Maheshwa, sorry, not Maheshwa, Marius Van Lari, even the number 28, in that fetching bucket hat. Oh, rushing out front, Candinale with the immediate pop pass to Clemel, and it's a quick and slick hold. Looks like there might be a pick call here uh, from the stack. Cardinale using those toque cleats uh, at the front of the stack to, to squeak free of his defender, um, putting a nice move on Nama Carney. Uh, but Louis Stewart calling the pick, um, so it looks like the goal will be coming back and Louis Stewart will catch up Cardinale with the disc at the front of the end zone. And it's immediate lefty dish, offhand, backhand. Yes, please. Score so nice, they did it twice. <laughs> yeah, lovely, uh, lovely little lefty from Cardinale there. You could tell with the, the speed with which he threw that goal, he knew exactly what he was throwing as soon as it came in. So I have a question for you then, Smurf. Do you play your ultimate on grass in Tokai cleats? I don't at the moment. Uh, I know that we do have a Tokai ambassador, Sarah Melvin, uh, as part of the Ranla uh, setup. Um, I, I think she might be still tracking down her ambassador code to give me. Uh, but once I get that, I'll certainly be investing <laughs> in a pair. Um, but I'm seeing more and more of them. Um, and everything I've heard about them is good things. So might have to, to test them out once I get back on the field. Well, as we have the klaxon, well, not klaxon, the announcements over the PA system here that we have five more minutes of this game to go. So a little bit more than our clock officially says for you. Apologies. But uh, there is Tokai presence here at this tournament. So if you want to go check yourself a size. <coughs> oh, excuse me there. Goodness, I just got overcome by some coughs. Um, Yes, if you want to go check check your sizing, Sam, and, uh, you know, Smelvin's here. She could get you that discount in person for the ambassadorship. I might just have to do that. I, I can't tie my laces at the moment, so I might need some help on that. But uh, from what I've heard, the customer service is brilliant, so I'm sure they wouldn't mind. It's exceptional. I have some of the OG leather cleats from way, way back, and they are still going, would wow. you believe? And actually, Rob, uh, this is the level of customer service. There's a little bit of the stitching that, that kind of came quirkily undone. And I said to Roman about it um, at a tournament. I have the old leather ones. And uh, he said, yeah, just send them over. I'll get them restitched for you. And I was like, oh, no, Roban. <laughs> I'll do it myself, but thank you. 
Yeah, you love to see that. Uh, Frisbee companies looking after their players. They really do. They certainly, certainly do. And of course, the stash at this tournament, I've caved and I've bought some. I've, I've said I wouldn't do it this season, but the long sleeve sun hoodies just look too fresh. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Tell you what, as fresh and clean as that inside laser backhand look, uh, flick was from Dean McCreary. Yeah, such a balanced thrower out there, Dean. Uh, can really get from his backhand to his flick pivot uh, faster than most people that I've seen uh, while retaining that balance. And Joey Curtis has it here outside the end zone. And it's another launch. There is the play there, but the foul is called. Whether that's a strip or not, Selkirk saying doesn't like that play. Yeah, interesting. Uh, obviously, there is a little bit of contact there, but in ways, it almost looked like the thrower kind of missed his mark and Selkirk had to change his line. It is an interesting one in Frisbee being a non-contact sport. Where is the line on, on who's initiating that contact? Uh, but the defender immediately holding up his hand, saying it was too much from their side and uh, uncontested slots it in for a goal. Yeah, it's that reactionary thing, isn't it? Of Perhaps a as a defender, you're not changing your line. The offensive player is, but you still have to be mindful and reactive. But I tell you what, there was no opportunity for a foul call on that reception from Dylan Ryan because what mark? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, lovely throw from Selkirk. Uh, finding his composure again after taking a little bit of contact and that puts Ireland up 12-9. So in the closing moments of this game, we have a little bit more, a few more minutes than the clock gives us. It's the one falling <laughs> foul of having the countdown clock. It's real obvious when we don't have it quite on the money, but we're... Uh, Going to get a couple of extra minutes, I think, because we had five minutes called over the Tannoy system here in Amsterdam. So apart from Brina Healy rinsing people, Sam, what's your off-pitch highlight so far of the tournament? Off-pitch highlight? Um, I would have to say, well, obviously, Flinner going by, giving me the finger guns, uh, beautiful man. Uh, that's that's always going to be a highlight of anyone's weekend. We did have some lovely food um, yesterday. Myself and some teammates were wandering around Amsterdam and had a mango and passion fruit cheesecake, which I wouldn't have said is what Amsterdam is known for, but it was absolutely delicious. Oh, my favourite thing about Amsterdam is the uh, vending machine hot food action oh. they've got going on with all of those lovely croquettes. And that is a beautiful throw, a lefty bladey flick connecting with Sean Mahoney. Well, no, not Sean Mahoney, was it? Yeah, it is. He's wearing his double calf compression. It is Sean Mahoney. Don't, don't second calf yourself, Hannah. An Irishman scoring against his home team. Yeah, three Irishmen on this uh, Amsterdam team. They seem to be popping up everywhere. Of course, Ireland, uh, a nation of people who, who like to get out into the world and experience new cultures. Um, and I'm really impressed Amsterdam have started to find their range going downwind on these deep shots. Uh, had a couple of... Uh, of tougher looks earlier on in the game, uh, but really finding it now. Might be a little bit too late for this game, but we're only in round three um, of the tournament. It's a long weekend, so, so positive signs moving forward. Well, we do get our lovely jingle signaling the end of this game. Who the heck is Alice? To give it its uh, <laughs> radio-friendly version. Because, of course, this tournament is themed as Wonderland. Herbie in Wonderland, so 12-10 the score. Of course, with the almighty algorithm, AUC will be much more pleased with this scoreline than their last game, which is a 15-6 loss. Yeah, good showing here from the Amsterdam team. They'd love to finish it with an upwind break. 12-11, uh, certainly an extremely respectable scoreline against the strong national team. Uh, Selkirk has been sent to the disc. It looks like a flood play for Owen Lawler. Well, this potentially to finish us off, but look at that run through block and it's Cardinale, of course. He is everywhere in this game. Uh, I don't think that was his man at all, but it did look like it was a hook into pretty strong coverage. Um, Ireland trying to play a bit more expansive now as they get into the finer stages of this game. They'll really want to get this one this, this, this back with their O-line uh, and slot it in for the 13-10 win. Well, it hasn't been a flawless performance from that Irish O-line, as we say. Can they put something together here? Shooting all the way against the wing. Cardinale flying around in that handless space. Van La. Teasy bit of footwork in those Tokai feet with the very long yellow laces. 
Cardinale though can't quite keep the grasp around that one that gets caught and tipped by the wind. McCreary trying to just point and throw what he wants. But it's going to be one threaded through and that one out into the space collection for Dylan Ryan. And that will finish us off, I believe, here. Players hand slapping. So an eventual Irish victory, 13-10. Lovely. Yeah, great game from Amsterdam. Really put it up to the Irish team, made them work. I think we have a mix round on. It might be Great Britain, France on this pitch, Rex. Am I correct in saying that? Well, let's find out, shall we, Sam? It is going to be, indeed, a Great Britain mix, France mix. But that will be on potentially the other pitch. We are either way going to have Lithuania mixed versus Estonia mixed. So, so many national teams for your delectation do not go anywhere. For myself, Hannah kind of Pendlebury, for Sam Murphy and all of our hardworking Alti TV crew under the sun, we will see you for the next one. Don't go anywhere. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. Enjoying the show? Show your support for the live stream and the people making the show. Buy a super chat or super sticker on YouTube directly. Select your donation and type your message to the world and share. All donations go into directly funding new shows. Buy a super sticker or super chat now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, ultimate.